Hello friends, writers, readers, book nerds, other nerds, welcome to my channel. Um, my name is JJ, if you're new here. I like to have fun on this channel, and today I wanted to talk about some of the things that world building and DMing for Pathfinder have taught me about writing, um, and in general how that has impacted my capabilities and my thoughts and how I approach writing now. Um, because that's really what it is. It's it's writing. I'm creating a world, because I homebrew everything for my players. And so I'm creating a world and then plugging pieces in from the bestiary, from the NPCs, gallery, stuff like that. And because of that, um, the rules work a little differently, but th there's a set of rules about how magic works, so I didn't have to come up with any of that, but I do have to come up with how that set of rules interacts with the world that I want my players to be in. Um, and so I just wanted to talk a little bit about how that has impacted my writing. Today, I really, really just wanted to dive into <laughs> what does it actually look like to be prepared, um, and how do you decide whether or not you're prepared, and how how does any of that look, right? So, um, as, a, as a DM, for me, DMing is actually a lot, it, it's very similar to how I write my novels. And here's why. Um, when I'm writing a novel, I go in with no plan. Um, half the time for my first draft, I, it's all pants. I'm flying by the, by the seat of my pants, as the NaNoWriMo term calls it. Um, and I just sit down and I'm like, hey, you seem cool, and I follow them around, right? Follow the character around, I feel like I should clarify. They do their own thing. I have very little to do with controlling what they do. I really am more like a passive observer who is jotting down notes while they live their life, right? Um, I also just happen to have access to their brains and I can hear their thoughts, and it's kind of fun. I like it a lot, um, which is why I write that way, at least when it comes to first drafts. Everything after my first draft gets an outline and adjustments after that, but I have to have something on the page that I can work with. Um, and that has to come before I can do anything else. So, that said, DMing um, is very similar because I have no idea what my characters are going to do. I have no idea at all what my characters are going to do. I can make some guesses so I can be prepared with certain stats or DCs or anything like that. If I put this obstacle in my character's way, they're most likely going to do XYZ, right? So if I give them something magical or or if I know that one of them has the ability to detect magic, they are going to do that 90% of the time. Um, if we have, like in one of the other campaigns that I was playing in, we have an investigator who is really good at finding traps. And so one of the things that he did every single time they entered a room was trap check, <laughs> which is great. But as a DM, you have to be prepared for that sort of thing once you know that that's going to be the thing that they're going to be doing. And the same thing works in writing. Um, if you know that you're sending your characters into a room and you know that that particular character, for me, my characters are most of the time criminals and most of the time they have a little bit of training or at least a heightened awareness to different things. And so for those characters, I have to make sure that there's something that they would notice in the room that most civilians wouldn't notice, right? security cameras, security personnel, those sorts of things, even just noticing where the exits are and having an exit strategy, those are the sorts of things that my characters would need to know. And I know that because of who they are as a character, right? So when I'm planning my world, when I'm planning the world that they're going into, I have to make sure that I plan in certain things for them to do. In the same way that as a DM, if I know I have a character who can use magic, and even more who can detect magic, I can now use that to increase suspense. Because they can look at the magic and they can say, oh, that's necromancy. Great, we're in danger, right? It's even more fun. One of my other players in a different campaign that I DM for, um, he has experience as a DM. He was my DM. He got me into the game in the first place. And because I know he knows things, I use his meta-knowledge against him to increase suspense, right? Or to just let him lead himself astray, right? Which is 
another great tactic when it comes to writing in general. You want your reader to make assumptions, and whether those assumptions are right or wrong, they still have to fit in line with the evidence. But the evidence, if you're doing it right, should probably lead them to a different conclusion, um, should naturally lead to a different conclusion that still fits. That's the trick with writing mysteries. Um, people know all the time, like, I have, I have a hard time watching crime shows now because the second that all of the evidence is laid out before us, I know who did it, I know why they did it, and I'm just waiting for the detective to catch up and I'm like, wow, okay, cool, I got it. Sometimes, sometimes they pull one over on me. Sometimes I get caught up in the suspense of how on earth are they going to catch this guy because that's a really good criminal, which A plus writing on, on the, the writer's part because even, I mean, we all know who did it. That's suspense. We all know who did it. We just have to figure out how they're going to get caught because they're too smart, right? So you can use your reader's base knowledge to build suspense. You can use your character's base knowledge to build suspense. You can use your character's assumptions to lead your reader into a certain expectation that you wouldn't otherwise be able to guide them into without making the assumption that they know some things, right? So with, with some of my characters, even in their, like, with my characters while I'm DMing, right, I'll have them make knowledge checks on things that they should know about. And if they get high enough, or if I'm like, you know what? They should know this from their background. This should be common knowledge that DC was a little too high. They would have experience with this, so I'm going to just give it to them in the first place anyway. I use that in the game to let them share information with the group in the position of an expert, or to let them increase the suspense for me, right? Like I said, they don't have to know exactly what's going on as long as they can jump to conclusions that seem logical. The same thing works with your characters and the same thing works with your readers when you're writing a novel. How you control information flow dramatically controls suspense. This is why most of the novels that I write are split POV, split point of view. Um, we have multiple characters, follow both the good guys and the bad guys. I put that in quotes because all of my characters are extremely morally gray, and the good guys are really just the bad guys that you're rooting for. Um, personal preference. I use, I use split point of view because I want you as the reader, your reading experience should be propelling you through the book, right? And so if I don't tell you enough about a certain character's experience at the time, Especially if I split the party, if I split the characters up into different groups. Um, I almost never have all of them in the same room together because that's how you know they won. <laughs> Somebody is already always in danger at every instance because of the type of books that I'm writing. Um, so, by splitting them up and by having you see their different perspectives, you know, oh shoot, the bad guy is closing in. Oh shoot. How are they going to get away with it? Oh shoot, how are they going to figure this out? Are they going to figure it out in time? Because you can see all pieces of the puzzle. By letting you see all pieces of the puzzle and leaving that blindfold over my character's eyes in my novels, you have the advantage, and that advantage actually increases your suspense as you're reading, simply because you know too much, and that increases the conflict in yourself and in the books at the same time. But that's one of those ways that becoming a DM has helped my writing in general, and by me being a writer, helped me in my DMing. And it's because as a DM and as a novelist, you're controlling the information flow. The only difference is that for DMing, your characters are the ones that you're increasing suspense for. In writing, the audience are the ones that you're creating suspense for. So in writing, you have to do things a little bit differently um, in order to increase suspense for your reader. It's all about the reader's experience. As a, as a DM, it's all about the player's experience. If they are deeply engaged, everyone will be having more fun. Anyway, I just wanted to give you a little insight into how I write novels, 
how I DM things, where all of that comes from, and how they coexist together, because they're quite fun to do at the same time. I, I have noticed my um, creative energy has to go toward one or the other, but it's always helpful because they take different types of creative energy, and so when I'm too tired to write, I can still plan for DMing, and it's still creative and flexing those writing muscles without necessarily sitting down and typing out an entire novel. Um, if you have other questions or ideas for how this all works together, post them down below. If you have an idea for a video you want me to make or a question you want me to answer about writing, about gaming, about, I don't know, being a publicist, marketing books, let, let me know. Leave a comment, shoot me a message somewhere. Um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Tumblr. I'm everywhere, uh, pretty much except Reddit. So check me out, author JJ Hanna, every single place on the internet. And until next time, I will see you then.